Have you ever made something way more complicated than it needs to be? That's pretty much the story of my entire life. So what you see in front of you is my orange nightmare of a water cooler for my laser. If you're new to laser cutters, uh, you might not realize this, but laser cutters are actually water cooled, at least the CO2 laser cutter that I bought. Um, and it requires water between the temperatures of 60 degrees and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the laser cutter does introduce quite a bit of heat to the water. And whenever it does that, what people usually do is just include some sort of like fan to blow on the water reservoir to dissipate the heat, or they put some sort of bubbler in there like you would see in an aquarium. All of that makes a lot of sense. I could have done that, and that would have really been a lot easier, but instead I made this orange nightmare that I love so very much. So, in this video, I'm going to show you the laser cutter water chiller I made, as well as the control panel associated with it. I uh, hope you enjoy the video, and let's get to it. I've been trying to figure out the best way to start this video, and I really think the best place to start is with the control panel. Now this is not the original control panel. The original control panel looked very, very different. I'll put a picture of it up on the screen. The original control panel was very basic. It had a Arduino Nano inside of it, uh, an LCD display, uh, some, you know, switches and a potentiometer and some lights. And that was it. That's all I needed. And it actually worked really, really well. The problem was though, I figured out that you could hook it up and plot the temperature over time using the serial plot function in the Arduino IDE. And that got me addicted to the idea of having a built-in graph that would graph the temperature that this chiller output over time. And I, I just couldn't get away from it. I had to do something that, that included that. And that's when I came across this display. This is actually a next-gen uh, touch screen. Personally, I thought it was a pain to try to get incorporated into the project. The code behind it to make it talk to an Arduino was really, really crazy. I've never dealt with a touch screen before much, but uh, this was not super intuitive. Uh, good thing is there's a lot of things out on the internet, like there usually are, uh, that kind of help walk me through it. So kind of let me go through what this display does and uh, how it works. So this is what I call the manual screen and let's go through the information on the right. So on the right you've got basically all of the information coming from the chiller system. You've got the input temperature which is the temperature of the water coming into the chiller system, the output temperature, output of the uh, water from the chiller system into the laser cutter, the delta temperature, the temperature between the two, uh, the ambient temperature which is good to know because how this chiller works is it can only cool the water to ambient air temperature. It can't go any cooler than that. So, for example, if you set the temperature to be at 65 when it's 67 degrees out right now, it won't work. The next uh, item that it displays is the flow in liters per minute. So there is a flow meter on the system which tells you how much water is flowing. It's, I don't think it's super accurate, but it kind of lets you know if there's a clog or not a clog. Now, these on the left side, these are actually buttons, and you'll be able to hear things turn on, so it's gonna get a little bit loud, but if I press this, the pump turns on. As you can see, the flow sensor started noticing that there was water moving. Here, you'll hear the fans turn on. And then, I know this is not very uh, straightforward, but there's actually a heater in the system, so if you turn this, the heater turns on, you can't hear a heater working, but it's working. Um, and I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, um, but I'll kind of get into it here in a second. And then you've got uh, the automatic mode. And while the manual mode is, is useful, uh, basically uh, if you're trying to get in there and get something working real quick, it, it's really easy to use. It's also really good for troubleshooting, but uh, the real idea behind this whole system is in the automatic mode. Now whenever I click this, the whole system's going to turn on, so it's likely you'll hear some pumps, maybe some fans turn on. But let's see what happens. There we go. So the pump came on. Now this is the heart and soul of this whole controller. This is way too complicated, but it's awesome. I love it. 
So here you've got the same information that you had on the previous screen. You've got the input temperature, the output temperature, the delta, delta temperature between the two, the ambient temperature, and the flow in liters per minute. You also have this ST. This is a set temperature and you can move this potentiometer left and right to set that temperature anywhere between 60 degrees and I think I've got it maxed out at 80 degrees. Now what this controller will do is it will control uh, the heater and the fans to try to make the output temperature that this chiller outputs match whatever you set it to. That's the whole idea behind this. Um, and again, my previous controller did that just fine, but what it didn't do is graph everything, which again, totally pointless, but I love it. It's so fantastic. As an engineer, graphs are like the coolest thing in the world. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's stupid to say, but it's the truth. So um, I'm going to turn this a bit. Well, as you can see here real quick before I start changing anything, really light. It's hard to see, but there's a little orange line making its way across the screen. That is the output temperature. So that's the temperature of the water leaving the system. Now, if I turn this knob to the right, we're going to tell the set temperature to go up and you'll see it right now. It says status running and that running's green. It's going to go to heating and it's going to turn red. Let's change it. So we've set the temperature to be 70 degrees. As you can see, it's now saying heating. And if you see up there, there's a little white line. That white line is our set temperature. So that's what the potentiometer is telling the uh, microcontroller that our set temperature is supposed to be. And uh, one other thing that I programmed in is this red line right here. That automatically moves to 50 to represent the heating cycle being on. So I find that really useful whenever you're trying to kind of see how the whole system reacts um, based on whenever the heating cycle is on or off that's just really useful. It, it's not actually a temperature, it's just the status of the system. So this display, this chart does move quite slowly, which it's supposed to, because it helps you see how the water temperatures change over time. So as you can see right now, we're in heating mode, but let's say we want to cool the water down. So let's set the temperature to something lower. And you should hear the fans kick on, so that might be a little bit loud. There you go. So we've got it set at 60 degrees. As you can see, that white line jumped really far down to the new set temperature. The red line went straight down because it's no longer in heating mode. And there's gonna be a blue line that starts. And that blue line, again, same thing as the red line, but the blue line represents that it's in cooling mode. Um, and that's basically how this whole system works. Uh, this is, again, the brains behind it. It's the next-gen display, a potentiometer, and an Arduino Nano running this whole thing. Um, all of this information from the sensors to the relays, all of that stuff is sent to it through a CAT6 connection. Um, nothing fancy. I just have 5 volts. Actually, I've got 12 volts coming in through the CAT6, all the signal wires, everything comes through here. There is a little buck converter that knocks the 12 volts down to five volts. I did that because this next-gen display actually uses a decent amount of power and the built-in power regulator on the Arduino Nano cannot keep up with it. So that's why I designed it this way. And if you plug it back in, system starts back up. So that's basically the brains behind the system. Okay, so below the controller we have this basket, for lack of a better term, and this houses our fans and our reservoir, and that reservoir is what holds all the distilled water. Now, these aren't just fans, there's actually radiators behind here. These radiator fan combo units are typically used with computers. People, you know, pump water through their computer to cool it, and then this radiator gets all of the heat out of that water. So. How this works is these are the fans that the controller turns on and off based on temperature. Warm water comes in through this side, goes through the radiator, the fans turn on below the cool air across it, cools down the water, it comes out this tube and goes back into the reservoir. And we've got two of them in parallel. So that's kind of what these are. Now let's take a closer look at the reservoir. So this is a look inside of the reservoir. What we've got here is a standard aquarium pump and an aquarium heater. 
and I know this is really odd. Why are you making a chiller that has a heater in it? But, but bear with me. So my shop is basically a garage, and it does not have heating or cooling. And uh, I don't want to keep my shop heaters on 24-7 because I only get to come out here, you know, during the weekends or if I'm lucky, you know, for an hour or two during the weekday. So I don't want to pay to heat my shop all the time. So there's a solid chance that this water is going to be below the recommended 60 degrees sometime when I want to use my laser cutter. So because of that, I put a heater in it. So if I do come out to the shop, um, the water's a little chilly, I can just turn on that heater and everything will be fine. Now, during the, the coldest winter months, I will take this whole reservoir out, this whole thing pops out, and I will take it inside because... I, I don't want it to freeze, but in general, this should work, you know, eight or nine months of the year. So that's kind of the heater and the pump. Um, one other thing to know about the heater, it does have little set temperatures you can set on it, but since I control the heater turning on and off with the controller, I just max that thing out. So that's kind of the reservoir in a nutshell. This gray junction box is basically the box that holds a whole bunch of electronic parts. So in here, we have all of our black cords right here. These are all of our temperature sensors, which I'll show you here in a second. Um, but all of the temperature sensor cables come into this box. Um, I have uh, the signal coming out through this Cat6 cable going up to the controller. Um, and this is just a, I think it's an LED cable. And this white cable controls power on and off to the fans. Um, also inside here, we have a just extension cord that comes down and I, I built a separator in here so I've got a divider and it has 120 volts down here and uh, basically 12 volts up here and there's a, a divider separating the two. Uh, down on the 120 volt side I do have two relays those relays turn on and off and they control the heater and the pump which I just showed you in the reservoir and up above I've got uh, some more relays one of those relays controls power on and off to the fans, and the other relay has a, a function. I was going to actually tie it to the laser cutter to turn off the laser cutter if the water temperature gets out of spec, so if it goes above 80 degrees or below 60. Uh, I haven't done that yet. Uh, I realized that the laser cutter actually has a built-in pressure sensor, so if I just turn off the pump, the laser cutter will turn itself off. So. Uh, Keep it simple, stupid. Uh, no need to, you know, hook up a control signal from here to the laser cutter to turn it off if I can just do it by turning off the pump. So this is behind my laser cutter and I'm right next to the wall so it might be a bit echoey but uh, sorry about that. And this is where the temperature sensors are. So these are just digital temperature sensors um, and they're waterproof and I routed them inside of this Y and so I've got water from the pump coming in here and it hits this Y and then this pipe or tube goes to the laser cutter and in here I, I slipped the temperature sensor in there and then I just filled the whole thing with silicon to kind of keep water from running out it actually works really well I thought I'd have leaks all over the place but uh, it works um, I've got this labeled so this is the output temperature and I've got the same setup over here and this is the input temperature and it's actually been surprisingly accurate how well these have worked. So uh, that's how I get the temperature readings to my controller. So if you're anything like me, you've stuck around for the graphs. And I will not disappoint. We will show you some cool graphs. So what I'm going to do for this test is I'm actually just going to have the system run by itself. I'll put it in auto mode. I'll turn up the temperature. We'll see it climb to that temperature. Once it gets there, I'll turn it down. So then you can see the, the temperature go down back down to ambient. This is not going to have the laser cutter running. This is just kind of to show you how the whole graph function works. So uh, enjoy the graphs. As you can see, the temperature is increasing to the set point. Once it gets to the set point, I decrease the temperature so you can see the cooling mode in action. I did make a slight error. I turned the temperature down a little bit too low. Uh, the temperature is too close to ambient. So it would take a really long time for the chiller to get the water that cool. So as you can see at the last second, I kind of turn it up a little bit to, to get the whole system to stop. But in a nutshell, that is the system in action. Hopefully you learned something. If you didn't learn something, hopefully you like the graphs. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.